Welcome to the video. In this video we're looking at another fixed wing model. This is the Night Walrus from Hobby King. Now we are a big fan of this kind of class of plane. We have quite a few Bixlers in our collection that we use for FPV and I was interested in the Walrus and when the Night Walrus came out I thought I've got to get one of those because one of my friends has uh, LEDs all over his Bixler and it's really fun to fly that at dusk and in darker conditions. Now this model when you get it is comes in a very long big box. Uh, we're going to use one of these quantum batteries but we'll have a look at that in a second. There's the user manual and then the majority of the space inside the package is taken up with this big body that is very sleek with the prop already installed all ready to go then we have the wings and we have the rear horizontal stabilizer as well all of the decals are attached all the servos are set up the carbon rod is in here too so you can put the wings together the only other thing in here then is a little box in the side that has some additional screws and bits and pieces to help you put it all together the wing itself has both ailerons and also flaps the servos are already installed and covered in tape and there's also the embedded leds in each of the wings as well and the wings uh, look like they go together with a carbon spar in the middle and are connected inside the horizontal stabilizer for the back is nice and big and again you can see that uh, it has the leds installed that's what that little strap is for i do like the fact they've got the decals underneath that look very different from on the top that will help with orientation then we have the vertical stabilizer with a rudder um, no horns attached here but you can see again we have the led strips either side and then we'll have a little bag of bits and in here is the servo cable to connect all everything up. We have the power cable that plugs into the ESC that provides power for all the LEDs across the model. And then we have the control rods for the servos. We have to install and set those up. Um, Allen key and a couple of long bolts which are there to go through the wings to hold them in place. Also have the plastic control horns that we put onto each of the control surfaces. So that's the first job when we're gonna start putting it together. Assembly is pretty straightforward. The manual is nice and colorful. For center of gravity, uh, we're using one of these batteries. This is a Hobby King um, Graphene 2.2 amp hours or 2200 milliamp hour pack. Uh, this in the nose provides perfect center of gravity if it's right at the front. And you can't, you have to be a little bit careful with the battery because if it's too wide, it won't fit all the way in the battery compartment. In the manual, there's details about the center of gravity, how everything should work, it's nice and clear. I would always mark the center of gravity with a pen just to make it easier. So the first thing we're gonna do then is we're going to install these little control horns onto all of the control surfaces. There's a front and a back part, and what you do is you use two screws, not four, uh, diagonal corners, and you just pop those into the control surfaces. That is job one. And they just go onto these little indents. What the tip I'd give you is use your hands to just work the hinges a little bit. The hinges are just made from the foam and you want to make sure that they are nice and free. Also double check that the decals have been cut so that they are nice and free moving. It's very difficult to do this once you've installed the control horns and if you try it when you have then you'll dint the foam. But once they're installed they're nice and easy and you're ready to pop on the next part. The vertical stabilizer is exactly the same. Uh, use the same trick, just use your finger to break the decals. Um, ours weren't and we had to kind of just uh, slice through it with a thumbnail. And again, the elevator at the back here, um, you can see here that it's actually completely covered. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just run a little craft knife just to break those decals so that we have nice, easy movement of that control surface. Just stick those little bits down and then you can kind of make sure that that hinge is nice and free before you install anything onto it. Put the tail together is really easy. Just screw on the ends for each of the two rods. There's one here for the elevator and one here for the rudder. And then what you need to do is just pull the arms from the servos up into their 90 degree position. Uh, we'll use the radio to set that up when we get there. 
and once the servos are in their 90 degree position then you can install the control rods now the control rods and the holes in the arms are the right size which is really nice on quite a few models that we get we end up having to just open those holes up with a little drill uh, but these are perfect um, so just make sure that with the servo arm at 90 degrees that the control surface is in line with the wing itself and then we're going to use sub trims on the radio just to make sure that that's the case when it comes to setting everything up Installing the rear control surfaces is really straightforward. You do have to be careful with these cables because these are the ones that connect to the LEDs. So you just push this piece into the back. There are like little recesses cut into the body. And then you have the connectors here to put these little uh, connectors into the back. There is some cover over this back piece here. What I would do is I'd use a little bit of tape here just to cover up the wire when you're putting it in. Um, I'd use a little bit of epoxy to hold it in place and then you do the, exactly the same thing for the vertical stabilizer. Again be very careful with the wires. You want to push them as far as you can into the body and just make sure that you can test fit everything and it's just a case of smearing a bit of glue around the outside and then the wings installation is very straightforward too. Um, undo all of the cables and again you just keep track of where the cables are. They do have little symbols on them to let you know which is which which helps with the install and for each wing we have a, a servo for the aileron, we have a servo for the flap and we also have a connector for the LEDs as well. So just be aware of which is which and uh, try and keep track of that for when you're putting it all together but they do talk about in the manual which number corresponds to which control although for me having one with the A or F written on it for a flap or aileron would have been a little bit more straightforward and I probably wouldn't have had to refer to the manual quite as much. The ailerons go together with a little Y cable, so we only need a single channel on the receiver. And there's also another Y cable for the flaps as well. In addition, we have this separate cable here. Now this is going to plug into the ESC and these four connectors here are for the lights in the body, the wings and the tail as well. So we're going to have to set that up. Now the way this works is that the ESC provides the power for all the LEDs. So when you plug it in, by default, all the LEDs are on all of the time. But by attaching these Y cables onto the control surfaces, again, being careful to try and keep the numbers the same. So both uh, number nines go into the number nine Y adapter. You can work your way through and get everything ready to install the wings into the body. Installing the wings into the body is a little bit tricky because what you've got to do is get all these cables down through that hole that we can just see there and into the body and pulled forward. Uh, this was a little bit of a faff and I ended up having to make a little bit of um, bent metal to pull it through. But once you've got it all forward, it's relatively easy to, uh, to put everything together. The carbon fiber spar goes into uh, the hole of one wing. And then what I'm going to do here is then install all of the other connectors onto the wires in the other wing and then push everything home making sure that as much of the cables as possible goes down into the hole and nothing gets trapped. Now we haven't glued the wings in we've just secured them with the two long screws that you get in the kit and they've been absolutely fine. So this is one of those models that if the removal of things like the cables was a little bit easier it would have been a simple case to break it down for storage. At the front, when you pulled all those cables through, then you kind of can see which is which. You can see which is one, which is nine. You then have to connect all of the LEDs up to the little outputs um, so that that's all ready to install into the ESC. And you can see here that little JST connector that's on here could work. I'm thinking about installing one of those Turnigy remote control switches to go in between these two connectors so I can turn the lights on and off in future. It isn't a ton of space in here so you're going to have to make sure that when you install all of these connectors onto your receiver you push them well back and you get the receiver well back behind the two servos that you can see as well and then you have enough room for the battery that sits in between those two servos. In flight the plane is beautiful. If you have a Bixler or one of those other style planes that has these very long thin winds with a, a little bit of upturn at the end that are very stable then this will feel very very familiar. It 
has tons and tons of power. Um, I did have to work a little bit on the propeller to make sure that it folded back when I turned the engine off and it glides beautifully as well. It'll stay up for a very long time. The LEDs are visible in anything but bright sunlight, but at night yeah. they look absolutely spectacular. Tip stalling isn't really a problem. The characteristics of this flying it around is very much like the Bixler in that it just is such a fun, relaxing, controlled plane to fly. And although it has the prop at the front, I'd probably say this is definitely one that if you're moving up from a slightly smaller plane and want something that's bigger, that you can fly a little bit further away that performs well, this is definitely something to look at. Just a quick look at the inside of this battery compartment. Here you can see that 2200 milliamp power battery. You can see it just fits in between those two servos. So do be careful that you're not trying to put too much in here because it literally won't fit. It's a bit cramped up front. Do take time and make sure that the propellers are nice and free moving. I had to pop one of mine out and just file a little bit off it so that it folded back. And the last thing I'll talk about is the way the decals are laid out. Hobby King have really done a great job here because the underneath has a very different pattern from the top. So even if you can't see the LEDs, this really helps with orientation when you're a little bit further out. So in summary, what do I think? This is probably now my favorite plane out of all the ones that I'm flying. It isn't something that's gonna be able easy to FPV because we have to prop at the front, but just in terms of a general flying experience, it is brilliant. It will fly around and easily handle 25% throttle all day, and you'll easily get 18 to 20 minute flight times out of a 2200 milliamp hour pack. But if you're flying with more of the engine off and gliding, then you'll get much, much longer. So if you've been thinking about one of these and you already have a Bixler, Personally, I'd say definitely get one. Uh, my Bixler, unfortunately, is probably going to spend more time in the hangar now I've got this model. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and happy flying.